Um, today we are welcoming uh, Luke and Davy, who are past pupils from Royal Park College, and they're going to chat to us about their creative practices. So I'm just going to kick things off. Perhaps I might come to Luke first, if that's OK. And if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and your creative practice. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm an artist, an illustrator, or whatever, like a label you know, don't put on that. But um, mostly I just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I like drawing and I've always kind of, that's always what, what I've been interested in. Um, I like making things that look weird, but pretty at the same time. Nice. Um, I don't know. I think that's creative practice. That's like how I do things, isn't it? <laughs> what? Yeah. So like, yeah, I'd be very like influenced by like movies and media that my family have made me watch. And that's kind of like seeped into my own brain. So yeah. I think absorbing other people's work is something that really makes me work then after, you know? Brilliant. Thank you. Excellent. And Davey, am I coming to you? Yeah, um, I am a musician. I am very much into maybe the writing side of music more than the performing sometimes. Um, music and sport have always been my two loves. So um yeah, I'm very into writing music. Similar to uh, Luke, I could be inspired by something I watch or more often not something one of my friends say or something I hear. Um, I can't really explain what sparks it. It could just kind of come on. I very rarely actively try to write, um, which is strange. It just kind of happens and eventually you just decide to not ignore it and start writing songs. <laughs> Really nice, brilliant, thank you. Um, and you're both from Moyle Park uh, College, Moyle Park College uh, past pupils, and from Kendalkin as well. Yeah, things didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Yeah. So, the next question, uh, again, I might start off at Luke. Um, can you think of your earliest memory or a time when you were creating art, when you were drawing, or, yeah? I don't really remember not <laughs> like whether whether you'd consider it like art or whether you'd consider it what it was, which was being like put in front of a television that had Jurassic Park on it and being told to draw dinosaurs. Um but like yeah, I always kind of that was the just the thing that I did when I had any time where I wasn't doing something else. I was very and I still am, like I can't not do things. I always have to have something in front of me yeah so um, that was always the like go to when i was a kid and i think eventually at some point i realized that i was able to get better at it so i kept doing it brilliant fantastic no i know certainly i as an artist almost feel frustrated if i haven't done or made something and it could be something really simple it could be from you know cooking a, a really nice meal or doing a doodle and you know sending it to a friend as a bit of a laugh or a joke you know there's yeah. there's definitely a, a need and there's an energy behind it and if you you can get bogged down almost and kind of wonder well why am I feeling a little bit kind of stumped or why am I feeling kind of down I I know I I certainly feel like better when I'm doing you know as tiring as that can be as well I think it is actually better for like my head my soul you know yeah um davy can you think of a, an early memory making music yeah i am um, i think it kind of comes in two parts i think um when i was in school actually maybe 15 to 16 i used to jot down words now i wasn't really a very i would say artsy person so i don't know what my uh, end goal was with them but i kind of take down words i don't know, like the odd lyric would come into my head and i don't know what i was remembering it for because at the time i didn't sing i didn't play piano so I didn't have anything to keep them for, but I did. Uh, and then when I was, like, this is late again, but then when I was 20 was just when I got my, I just got a, a bog standard keyboard and I just became addicted very quickly and started learning songs. And then eventually you think, why don't I just write my own? And um, then you just try and match up the words again and away you go, kind of. So it's kind of two parts. I remember writing words. Um, if I found my old copybook now, I mean, some of it is absolutely god awful. <laughs> but kind of two parts maybe once when i was in school writing words and then maybe when i'm 20 and actually began creating music yeah brilliant so it was a little bit a little bit later on when it was kind of okay what can i do yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would have been mainly trad music from like eight until 16, like really, really into it. My dad is a great trad musician. So that was the only kind of music I was I was playing. And then from 16 to eight, 16 to 19, 20, my only involvement with, with music was listening. And I didn't really like that when I when I realized all I do is listen to music. I don't actually I'm not involved anymore. Just It felt weird. Like, so um, I can't really imagine not playing it rather than just being a listener. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, okay, so was there a defining moment uh, that you realized that this is what you wanted to do after school? So Luke, uh, do you remember, was there a moment when you kind of go, huh, I think, think I might want to continue doing this? There actually, there definitely was because um, I, did, I did art like throughout all of secondary school and it was always like my favorite, it was always my favorite subject. But um, I remember in third year we had to do like a mock CAO and I remember I put some like ecology studies or something on it. It was something that I didn't want to do and I knew I didn't want to do. But I put it on it because it sounded like a good career. Um, and then I think it was in TY and we were in the art class at TY and I, you said something about when you went to college and I was like, wait, hold on a minute, I can do that. Like this is an actual thing that I can do that exists. For some reason that it never occurred to me before that I could actually do the thing. Oh, that I like amazing. So, yeah, that was definitely when I realized. Yeah. So, very oh. lucky that you mentioned the fact that you went to college <laughs> at some point. Oh, brilliant. No, again, um, same, like I had a, an absolutely brilliant art teacher in, I, I went to Clush Breed and uh, Miss Hoey, she was phenomenal and um, just so inspiring and especially just like just a brilliant worker like there was a total silence in the classroom but like really on board working it was just such a great like environment to come into and there was such like respect for her and respect for the subject and yeah there was definitely that moment of wait a second you can you can teach art like this is amazing you know I know I certainly was kind of torn between like Will I do teaching, like primary school teaching, or will I will I become an, an artist? And and when the two that magical kind of eureka moment that the two things could go hand in hand, it it was wonderful. So, yeah, love my job. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, Davy. So, any defining moments that come to mind, or um, probably one in I actually remember very well. It's in Tuttle's car park in the village. Yeah. I was with uh, Eric Murphy. Uh, my best friend from school is still my best friend now. Um, and I probably had maybe the best part of 50 songs, but like, again, not actually knowing what to do with them. Like, do I just wait until someone rings and says, do you write songs? Or I didn't actually know what to do. And he just suggested, like, I have a friend, Anthony, Anthony, who works at Wall Park. So Eric had explained to me that um, Anthony is into recording music and producing music. So he put the two of us together. I'd never really... Like, I don't know why it didn't come into my head that you can actually record these songs and, and see what you can make. And then that just opened up this whole new world that I wasn't just right and I could actually, you know, turn them into something real. Uh, so that, that's probably, that just never occurred to me that I, could, I should record these and that's kind of what started yeah. uh, me looking I, in that direction. I, it's sharing it as well and sharing your art can be a little bit weird sometimes. You know, again, it's yeah. kind of, are you, are you doing it as, I don't know, from... An art side of things are you doing this as an assignment or are you doing this for you and, and your head or you know you you just have to get this out so then there's something scary about putting your art into the world be it online or yes. on Spotify. Very scary. you're you're kind of exposing yourself and and that moment that you had you know um yeah feeling it's it's pretty scary but i think it's scary every time you do it it doesn't matter how often you do it it is um there's a bit of pressure to it. Like, are people gonna like this? Do I care if people like this? You know? Yeah. yeah. The first time I released anything, I was all I kept on thinking is like, I don't want to be the person down in the laurels in 10 years time and people are saying, remember how <laughs> rubbish she was. So you kind of, you want to get, you want to get <laughs> something, <laughs> something that you can stand by at least. Um, yeah. No matter, no matter how big it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Okay, we, we might jump on. So Luke, 
uh, is in NCAD now in National College of Art and Design. And uh, yes, Luke, you're, how are you getting on? What are you working on now? Um, well, the thing that we're doing now is like our final illustration project. So um, it's very like open and we kind of could end up doing whatever we wanted, basically. Um, but mine was, it's very like focused on considering that we, for the entirety of it, we couldn't really leave where we're from. It's very yeah. focused on like local pride. Um, yeah, what are you on? Um, I am still uh, with music. I'm still working on new stuff. Uh, I hopefully want to get a song out maybe for in April. I have a song out next month. Um, it's all going well. I'm still trying to get the finishing touches and that. And it's difficult because I can't meet Anthony. So I'm here in my house and he's, yeah. he's in the studio. Yeah. And so we're trying to send each other back and forth and uh, what we think should happen. So it's, it's definitely longer this way, but um, that's the plan for now with music. Um, outside of that, I'm teaching in Colmore College, so that keeps me busy during the day. And then I come home and either go running and football training or play music. Yeah. Fantastic. Mr. McCarthy by day, Davey by night. Mr. McCarthy by day, yeah. <laughs> Which is very strange. Um, yeah, just, just new music and trying to, trying to keep going with that. Thank you. Um, okay, so artists certainly uh, face challenges and um, I wanted to ask you guys what you find um, as your biggest challenge in terms of uh, being creative. So um, feel free to jump in. Sorry, Luke, you, you've always been the first person to speak. Wait, Davey, I'm going to put you on, on the spot. <laughs> um, yeah, the biggest, um, maybe in terms of showcasing is kind of just um, like getting over it, like we spoke of before with nerves and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would always, I don't really feel like a musician kind of person. I've always felt more like a sport person. So maybe that's a bit more... Uh, like critical of you maybe and stuff. So I, I was always nervous of what people might think, my friends and stuff. Um, but like if you just, I mean, I, I see music as, I, I mean, hopefully I can, I could go somewhere with it if I wanted, but I do see it mainly as a hobby and it's just something I enjoy doing. And if I make something that I want people to hear, well, why wouldn't I share it? Um, and you kind of have to get to the point where you don't like, you don't not sound too artsy, but the success is probably in just making a song. I mean, it's not really about yeah. who loves it or who doesn't love it. It's probably just that you did it because, I mean, if you enjoy doing it, why not do it? Um, so I think getting over that part was to, was one of the biggest things. And then creatively, um, I don't know, maybe the part I'm at right now with a song, this is the part I just hate when everything is finished and you kind of have to let go and you don't want to let go because I would work on a song for four years and just never bring it out, which is ridiculous because I just keep tapping away at a little thing and I'd ruin it so I do find it very hard to just say okay I'm finished uh, and yeah. that's yeah. without doubt my biggest <laughs> um, flaw I think art is oh, a, a thing with art of like when do I stop when is it yeah. done is done yeah. thing you know yeah, yeah. absolutely oh, that's it's so hard yeah Luke what would you think I think well obviously the same like the, when the, the first time that you put your work like into uh, any kind of public view, whether it's like in a small way or a big way, yeah, obviously that is like nerve wracking. But the other thing that I would say about it is, every time that you do it, the next time will be a lot easier than the last time. So like yeah. if you keep like showing people stuff, like eventually you'll stop caring. You'll start showing them whatever you do, even if it's awful and you don't even like it like you'll just be you'll get a lot more comfortable with that so um but yeah no it is absolutely very difficult when you start but yeah i suppose it's the keep doing the scary thing and eventually hopefully it'll get a little bit easier each time yeah, exactly it definitely does get easier i mean you already i already accept now i am the easy that thinks he can sing and make music so like that's just what you are you have to just go to them um okay so where do you find your inspiration anybody go on jump in you're too I, I, I find it hard to take credit sometimes i find inspiration from the like mainly what i hear whatever my friends say they could say anything and i just 
think that's a that's a good lyric. I could be I could read a text. I could read uh, an ad. That's I I don't know. I think kind of the more you the more you get about, the more you live. Maybe the more you the more you find. Uh, without sounding too deep, <laughs> but my friends could say something. It could be three o'clock in the morning. They were coming home from the night out, and they could say something, and I'll like get my notes in my phone out and just <laughs> take it down to remember for the morning. Just some awful weird things in my notes. I love so, that. Yeah, I love that's, that's kind of like a, a digital notebook where you can re- record things and record ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're always kind of listening. I think artists are magpies. You know, we're just constantly collecting. You're collecting ideas. You're collecting inspiration. You're taking photos. You're, you know, that goes yeah. across all creative fields. You are just a really good thief. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 exactly what it is. Yeah, a really good thief. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Luke, where are you finding your inspiration these days? Hey. Similarly, especially with this thing that I'm doing now, it is just like listening. Like listening to people talk is like a massive thing. Like sometimes you'll just hear someone say something cool or whether it's cool or whether it's like stupid and doesn't make any sense, it'll kind of spark something off in your brain. And you, even if what you end up making has nothing to do with what actually inspired it, yeah, it looks, yeah. it'll make you start doing something. And yeah. I think that's, that is really, I don't know, something quite interesting about that, I think. Nice. Thank you. COVID-19 um, was tough for everybody. Um, the lockdown kind of forced us all home and to kind of sit with ourselves and our families. <laughs> um, how did you manage continuing uh, being creative? Were you creative during this time? Anyone? <laughs> oh, you know, I, was, um, I think for the first part, I probably wasn't really. It was such a novelty of just not being in work and stuff that yeah. Uh, I didn't really do a whole lot at all. I was, I was so happy to be to be actually not able to do anything and not feel bad about it. Um, then eventually you start, you know, messing around at the piano again because there's nothing else to be doing, and you can only go for so many five k runs and stuff. And, um, yeah, I think just writing songs, and then like it was awkward because I couldn't meet up with Anthony, so we kind of got that period late last year where you could. Uh, meet up again and, and see people so we just record as much as we could in that time that we could then not have that I wouldn't need to be there to record anymore yeah. and we could just work yeah. on whatever we got done kind of yeah. um yeah that was it really yeah. Luke um I think I don't know during the first like lockdown during the summer I think it was almost the reverse like I was like I worked in a bar and I was in uh, Bally Fair College at the time so both of those were like done I didn't have to do that and then like for now so I just had loads of free time and I was like very excited to make things but then now well not now I think I've kind of gotten over that but when this current like lockdown started yeah it was like it was very hard because in college and in a lockdown it's not oh you're free to do whatever you want it's yeah you have a lot of time in your own room to do something that somebody else is telling you to do, which is a lot more difficult, I think. Mm. Um, mm. But I think it is like taking, the best thing that will help you to be creative when it's hard to be creative is taking time to not be creative. <laughs> Almost like take, take the time break. to like get out of your house and not think about it. And yeah. then when you come back to it, you'll, They'll, they'll just have more ideas and motivation. Yeah, brilliant. Really good bit of advice. Um, so continuing on this good advice, it is Moa Park College's Wellbeing Week. So how has your practice as a musician and artist helped you with your mental health and well-being? So Davy, I might come to you on that one. Um, yeah, I think definitely for me, it's, um, it's something I just really enjoy doing I always feel happy just sitting at a piano messing away I don't even have to be necessarily working on anything I could just be um just tapping around playing anything but uh, if I play piano for like an hour a day which I would most days and more um yeah it's just I don't know I'm always happy doing it that and, and playing football are just two things that I just don't uh, I don't really even feel switched on I just feel like I'm I'm in standby mode I'm just very relaxed yeah you don't have to think yeah yeah. yeah. Nice. Thank you. And Luke? 
Um, I think, I think honestly, it has helped a lot because generally I'm, I'm a very like stressed out person. I get stressed out very easily. So having kind of an outlet to just put whatever, even if it's not, even if it's vague, even if it's like not really anything to do with it, if you can just like put whatever you're feeling onto a piece of paper or into like sounds or whatever, I think it does like massively help. Even like take the pressure off of it doesn't have to be good, just if it helps, yeah. do it kind of thing. Like yeah, just the act of doing is is good. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be a an end goal. You know, just just making in itself it's a great kind of dare I say mindful mindless activity <laughs> you know it doesn't it it's a good, yeah. yeah okay so my last question thank you so so much um I'm looking for advice for my students um who are thinking about potentially exploring art or music after secondary school so would you have any advice yeah um just like just do it just just start and um, it doesn't matter what, yeah that, that'd be my advice um, no. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter in what capacity like you were just saying like just just doing and making is is it like i don't see myself releasing music forever but i see myself probably yeah. making music forever Um, you know for I'd, i would rather be into the writing anyway i don't really uh enjoy the whole releasing part that's that's a side note but just doesn't matter what capacity you're involved in if it is that you write it and you never let anybody hear it or for art you you draw something and no one ever sees it i mean if that's what you want to do it's still good for you um if you get to the stage that you want to share it great if you don't great just just be creative just do something good brilliant thank you and luke any advice um i think specifically for people who want to go to like say art college or music college or whatever um I would say like if you don't get there the first time that you try to do it, especially if you're trying to do it in like a leading set year or whatever, yeah. but, like there is there's really like no shame at all in just trying again. Because realistically, right. if you I went and did a portfolio course in Bali Pyramid and like that was during that year, like I absolutely got better at what I did. I decided like I had time to think about what I wanted to do. And I met some people that are like some of my best friends there. So like not like taking another year to get better and be sure of what you want to do is a lot more. Oh, good advice. <laughs> I think you just cut out there at the end, Luke. Oh man. I didn't know if that was me or not. <laughs> no, I think it was Luke. Luke, are you there with us? Yeah, yeah. Hey. sorry, I think my internet Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, <yeah. laughs> sorry, so you were kind of, you were mentioning sort of there is no shame and the fact that like taking out a year to become better. I think that's such great advice, absolutely. And the fact that like you, you then have time to really dedicate yourself to that practice, to that focus, you know, you're not, you're not worrying about leaving certs. You're not worrying about, you know, like exams or things like that. Like it, it can be a hundred percent like giving yourself to it. Um, and of course, like ex exposing yourself to other, other art teachers, other artists, you know, and kind of broadening that mm. you know, experience, I suppose. Um, brilliant. Well, that's us. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this has been wonderful. And um, I really, really, Oh, I'm so grateful um, to both you guys. I think it's lovely having kind of a mix. It's not just it's not just coming at it from a visual art point of view. Also to have uh, yourself, Davy, from a, a music side of things, um, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. And yes, um, that concludes our first episode podcast. I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but our first <laughs> creative thing <laughs> that we made together. Um, so thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Cut. Fantastic. I'm going to stop recording here now. Uh, well done. <laughs>